this is one little acre of a country that's on its ass. We need to build again from the bottom up, and you can't get any more bottom than the mine. Whitehaven in coastal Cumbria is a town with a rich mining history, scarred by years of decline since the closure of the Hague Pit in 1986. The 720 men learned of the coal board's intended rundown a week after the dispute began. It is a resigned acceptance, and for some 200 miners under 45, finding another job will be essential. Today, the town sits at the centre of a storm around plans for a new coal mine, the first approved in Britain for 30 years. On one side are those that argue for the mine's necessity, its green credentials, and the much needed investment it would bring to the area. Everything's closing down, shops is closing down, so everything's just... On the other are those concerned about its environmental impact and what it symbolises for a country that sees itself as a leader in the global reduction of fossil fuel dependence. It's not going to be a green at all, it's going to be increasing global emissions at a time when we need to be cutting them fast. With both sides disputing the claims of the other, common ground appears vanishingly slim. Uh, there's a lot of people who will tell you that aren't in the round here, so it doesn't matter to them. I've come to Whitehaven to attempt to understand why, amid an existential climate crisis, an overwhelming majority of local people support the plan. My heart is for the mining industry, but I'm fully aware that we could lose the planet. My first stop is to meet one of the new mine's most enthusiastic backers, Copeland's Conservative Mayor, Mike Starkey. See you later. Hi. There's a huge history to this town. I mean, how much of what's going on at the moment and I guess the psyche of, of the people around here is informed by the, the strong history and the strong relationship with mining. Obviously it's a factor. A lot of the old coal miners are absolutely thrilled to see coming back. There was a strong belief from them the mine should never have been shut down when there was sure. so much coal in there. Hello? David, it's Mayor Mike. Hello? Mayor Mike Starkey. Hello, Mike. How are you? I'm not bad, mate. Uh, Dave, I'm, I'm with the Guardian. Would you be able to catch us up anywhere? Mike is driving me to the proposed site of the new mine, to the south of the town. He's invited local miner-turned-poet Dave Craddock to meet us there. Is he going to come armed with poetry? <laughs> Hi, nice to meet you. We'll, we'll have, have to break in through the Oh, we've got to break in! <laughs> Fantastic. It's the biggest unofficial dog walking site in the country. OK, so watch your feet. So this will be like the road entrance into the surface building. Electric vehicles all coming down here, dropping off the miners. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it? I thought it was. If they've got electricity. <laughs> Did you bring some poetry, Dave? Yes. Me with. But why these grey-haired old miners say, do we ship it here from far away? There's millions of tonnes of it neath our feet. Dig it up and save the fleet. Before you climate warriors gathered here, off to Glasgow disappear. Reflect on this and tell your peer, close all them mines and mine it here. But don't sit on the fence, Dave. Where do you really sit on the, <laughs> uh, the prospect of mining around here? It's a very evocative industry, isn't it? Everybody thinks about the hard drinking miners and you know, that's all they did, but it wasn't true. There's a lot of people that uh, grew chrysanthemums and things like that. And Huge camaraderie though, David. Oh, brilliant, hi. Everybody knew everybody else. Everybody was looking out for everybody's backs because it was a dangerous industry, I'll admit that. And how much of your support of the mine now is based on that kind of, that, that, that memory of kind of the, the community it fostered and the, the, the camaraderie and the support it, network? It's all based on that. In my heart, I'm still an old miner. I'm just wondering if it's possible to get that back or if it, even, even the new mine here will, will not quite replicate that sort of, that community spirit that you're speaking about. Well, if we don't get the mine, we'll never find out, will we? To the east of the new mine sits Meyer House, or as the locals call it, Myrus, one of the most deprived estates in the country. Katrina McEwen has been working in this community for over 20 years. 90% of people in this area want the mine. Yeah. Um, you're from a mining family yourself. Yeah. How wedded are you to the idea of, of not wanting the mine? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm wobbling. 
My concern is the environmental one. As, as is most people's concern. Yeah, but I have the luxury of having two jobs and I can think about the environment. You can't afford to have aspirations if it's a daily struggle to feed your children. That's where people are, not like 50 years of time will, will have destroyed the environment. I'm following Katrina to the community centre on the other side of the estate. Uh -huh. I want to learn more about the legacy of mining in the area. I was just wondering if I could see a show of hands for people who have been married to a miner. Uh, in the sense that they work down the pit and not a child. <laughs> <laughs> what about dads? Brothers, uncles? Yeah. Everyone's related to a miner in some way, right? Yeah. There you go. Thank you. How has Myrus changed? since the mines were closed. I think he lost a lot of good spirit and that's yeah. it was cruel really. Yeah. Which way it was done. It's which way it was done, yeah. yeah. Are you for the mine? Of course, yeah. When I was a little girl and my dad used to go down the pit, he always took bread and jam for to eat down there. Right. And I always asked him please bring me a piece back. And he used to bring me a piece of bread and jam from the pit, and I thought it tasted wonderful. Really? And I, I always wanted to say that to somebody. Oh, but... And I'm pleased I've got to before I die. Oh, no. <laughs> Five pound foot line, 11 pound foot full house. Can I help? People seem very nostalgic about the idea of having a mine in the area. And I wonder, do you think that a lot of people, they're actually longing for, the, for, for a strong community? I do, but I think it's always the case of looking back, things always looked great, didn't they? I mean, there were a lot of problems with the mines and the strike was horrendous because I was a child when my dad was on strike from the mines and it was just like pff, all of those weeks and weeks and weeks with no money. The closure of the mines meant the end of prosperity for a lot of people. That's what dropped them into poverty. And trying to get people out of poverty isn't easy. So yes, I think the mine will be, it will appear and be, you know, whatever. But I, I can't see it providing, making that much of a difference to this area financially. That's very pessimistic. Isn't it just? <laughs> you sound quite resigned to kind of, I suppose, being let down in some way by what happens next. Is that just through experience? Yeah, these, um, <clears throat> these communities are always let down. The government initiatives, and there have been many of them, just like raise hopes for people and then the next thing, there's not much money left, there's a bit of a trickle. It's not, not anything that's going to change people's lives. People become disheartened, but also they become, they've become accustomed to it. Meeting at the nearby Whitehaven Miners Club, a Dave Craddock's pit crack group. Is there any uncertainty in this room about the new mine? Me. You? Yeah. I'm ambivalent and I wouldn't, I wouldn't come down on either side. Yeah, it's a tricky one, right? Yeah. Knowing how important the mining industry has been to West Cumbria because it was one of the few, uh, you know, the few possibilities of gaining a livelihood for a long, long time um, in the way that the nuclear industry is now, it is embedded, truly embedded in the history. That's where we work, that's it. Ah, uh, yeah, OK. The winding gear, you know. And the Where's that one with you on, Mike? Oh yeah, this chap here. You look happy. Well, I loved it. I would have walked the pit for nothing. Those were the days, eh? No, oh, the days. It was brilliant. I wish it was still happening. Today, local industry is dominated by the Sellafield nuclear site a little further down the coast. Employing thousands of workers and skewing the area's employment statistics, Locals complain many of the higher paid jobs there go to skilled workers based outside Copeland. 
when the mine was closed, do you feel that there wasn't the, the support for the community to put something else in its place? We just wanted to ship us all up to Sellafield, which we did. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. So it's a whole community. Right. Do you think that some of the hope that is placed in this new mine is misplaced? It would be no surprise if it was another false promise. When you look at false promises, right, in this area alone, we've lost the silk mills, we've lost Kangal, We've lost Marshawn, we've lost the pits, we've lost high duty alloys, and there's been nothing coming to replace them except for work at Sellafield. Yeah. Were things better, you know, a generation ago, in, 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 when the mines were open? The community spirit was greater, because most of the community grew up around the mines. Mm -hmm. When the pit closed, the village died to some extent. Despite the nostalgia for the camaraderie of the pit, the mine closures are clearly just one aspect of the area's gradual decline, compounded by a lack of diversity in the local industry. What support was there from the government when the operations sort of closed down in this area? Minimal. It's, and uh, isn't that part of the problem? Um, no, because I don't, I don't think we need to hark back to then. You know, we, 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 We're we, harking back all the time, though, looking at the history of the area. There is an impact for a lack of investment here for, you know, for, for time immemorial. We are the furthest constituency from London. Mm. You know, we're, we're in a remote area. You know, we've not had um, the investment, to, you know, forever. Mm. In a picture echoed across underfunded communities throughout the country, Myra's residents have taken matters into their own hands. Are you all right? This is my son. This is your son? Does he have an opinion on the mine? I'm not working in the mine. <laughs> <laughs> Local men are gathering here this evening for a training session for community football team Tubby FC, one of a number of programmes aimed at addressing social issues on the estate. Some lads have never been out the house. Some fellas haven't even kicked the football. I would say a majority, well, 90%, would suffer from mental health. And now they're just there with a, a good group of friends, kicking a football on a Monday and Friday night. And that's basically what we're doing. But it's amazing how something so simple can have such an impact. And it's not just about kicking a ball, it's getting people in, and these guys are coming in and socialising, they're talking, and like, like Chris is saying there, some of these lads right through lockdown and after, they didn't leave the house for two years. And it's a massive stigma for men. You don't want to talk. You're just taking that step to go and talk to that person. And community is, is such an important aspect of, of, of life here. Um, and and, and w with that, I suppose, comes kind of the, the great sort of mental health benefits of just kind of being in a group. Is, is the answer to a lot of the, the problems here, just giving people that sense of camaraderie, which obviously was, was, was there when the mines were open a generation ago? But I think the mental health side with the fellas is if, if, if they can't support the family, you know, they think, well, you know, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, not a man. It's fantastic what these lads are doing. Yeah, yeah. But there's got to be sort of a, a light at the end of the tunnel. And for some of these people of I speak, there, there, there isn't. They're, they're picking the door maybe two a week and maybe doing the odd job here and there. 500 jobs, can that really on its own be, be the catalyst for, for, for better times? If people's got money in their pockets and they, they can afford to go out and do things with their families, with their friends, you know, you, you're getting that brotherhood back, which they used to have all the miners. I think that's something which is talked about quite a lot. Mm. You, you bring that back to, back to White Even I'm not saying it's disappeared, mm. but it's more fractured than it's ever been since, since COVID. Mm. You know, some people, a lot of people haven't recovered. Mm. But for this community, this is, this is a light at the end of it's been a really dark four or five years. And if that light goes out and there is no mine, where would that leave Myrus? Well, it would leave us exactly where we are now. But it wouldn't because it would be a further dent in, in kind of, in, in hope, I, I I'm suppose. I'm a firm believer this, if this doesn't happen, so, some other pipe dream will come two or three years down the line and get everyone's ears pricked up. <laughs> we are where we are. It's happened before. It may happen again, hopefully not this time. On my visit, I have found plenty of examples of the community spirit many of Myris's older residents are nostalgic for and that a modern mine might struggle to replicate. But critics of the plan point to fleeting benefit clouding a long-term environmental disaster. It is the same short-term thinking that has left Myris neglected and its residents yearning for the return of coal.